Hey y'all, welcome to our fourth episode of Bring to Light. Today's episode is a part two to episode three, which is called Cholesterol, Red Meat, and the Real Cause of Heart Disease. In today's episode, we're going to talk about what we eat, we're going to talk about um, high quality meat, and a whole bunch of other fun stuff, regenerative farming. Also, I want to note that the first part of this video has not so great audio, so apologies for that. We're still learning how to do this whole podcast thing, so we appreciate your patience and for listening, even though we're just figuring this thing out as we go. So audio will be a little weird, and then it'll get really good um, towards the end. Yeah, enjoy. So we talked about what doesn't cause heart disease, which is cholesterol alone. We can't say that cholesterol is the sole cause of heart disease. Um, what, how that was spun is that cholesterol can form plaque in your arteries, right? And that can lead to heart disease as well as heart attacks. But we need to think why is cholesterol forming plaque and binding to your arteries? I think really the, the cholesterol's there too. I want to talk about that. So the cholesterol's in your blood all the time. And, and, and what I, they're measuring is blood cholesterol. They're saying mm -hmm. there's this much cholesterol of these varying types in your bloodstream. That's what they're measuring. I also want to mention that I know a lot of people that don't eat meat. Yep. They eat a lot of processed food, mm -hmm. frozen food. Yeah. I, I I'm, you you guys probably get the gist of what I mean when I say processed food. Um, and they have very high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. They have heart disease. Mm -hmm. They've had heart attacks. They've had strokes. They have diabetes. Yeah. They're not in good health. Yeah. And they're not eating eggs and meat. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So how do you make sense of that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if meat causes mm -hmm. heart disease. We know that cholesterol is there in the form of plaque when we're observing heart disease, but why is it forming the plaque? I think is the question we need to be answering and um, what causes that. So what's happening there is our blood vessels are becoming damaged through oxidative stress. Um, and yeah, what does that really mean? Our blood vessels have what's called an endothelial lining. Um, and that endothelial lining can be damaged through oxidative stress. Um, I'm going to link an entire podcast on endothelial lining because it's so interesting. And I think that's key in understanding everything that we're talking about. Um, it's really good. It is a long podcast, but thankfully they have timestamps mm -hmm. in the description. So you can jump around exactly to what it is that you want to learn about it. And the episode is called Becoming Heart Attack Proof. So I'll link that down below. Awesome. So yeah, what causes this oxidative stress and damage to our endothelial lining? Um, this can happen from a handful of different dietary and environmental stressors. One large category of things that can cause this type of stress are what are known as forever chemicals. These forever chemicals can come in many forms. They can be in our clothing, they can come from our water stream, they can come from the foods we consume. Um, so one of, one of the most uh, infamous chemicals is glyphosate, also known as Roundup, which is sprayed very heavily here in the United States. The amount that it's used has more than doubled since the mid 2000s. And we're seeing we're seeing those effects in our water streams. It's coming into the water in our tap. We're consuming that and it's staying in our body for a very, very long time. It's really hard for our body to release that toxin. It's really toxic. It's in stores. You can find it. It's a bottle of yeah, chemicals it'll be called, called Roundup. Roundup and yeah. that's what people use on their yards to kill weeds. Yep. And that's what large agriculture yep. uses. Industrial farming uh, uses, uses to that. kill weeds um and they use gmo crops that are specifically survive. specifically genetically modified so that they will not die 
when heavily sprayed with glyphosate. And so when we talk about, oh, uh, maybe you don't want to be consuming GMO foods, the reason is those foods were genetically modified so that they can absorb significantly more of significantly more pesticides so that this like weed, glyphosate. So that this killer doesn't kill. Yeah, doesn't which... kill, kill the crop, only weeds in the surrounding area. So they can just spray it and dump it on there and that comes on the food that you get at the grocery store. So um, th that's why we encourage organic um, and regardless, you should wash your produce as best as you can, but understand that these chemicals oftentimes absorb and will be in the underlying food that you're consuming. And so we don't say this to scare you, um, but I just want to raise awareness uh, around this in that it's a really good idea to go shake hands with your local farmer at the farmer's market mm -hmm. and buy produce from nearby where you can talk to them and learn what kind of farming practices they're using. That's a whole other episode that we'll get into because glyphosate is a, it's a big thing that yeah. I, I want more people to be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a study the other day, I think I sent it to you about how sperm male sperm is being found with glyphosate in it yeah, yeah and, and newborn babies are being tested Which, for glyphosate and they have breast milk yeah it, so many, it's found in our sweat yeah in our sperm in our breast milk in our babies the, this weed killer is still present in your sperm yeah <laughs> like, that's insane we've, we've already known that it breaks the blood barrier and can be found in the bloodstream but there's a new study that shows that it breaks the blood sperm barrier and now is in male sperm um, which is kind of terrifying. Yeah. Um, Branch Basics is a, a company that I love that you should check out. And they have this little post on Instagram that talks about pesticides, herbicides, biocides, fungicides, and mildicides. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about how the word side in a word on a label means kill. Yep. Um, so believe it or not, even just storing pesticides in your home um, creates a toxic low level chemical soup in your body mm -hmm. it's important to remove them from your home a whole other topic that we'll get into but um i just yeah. didn't know that i didn't know that the word side meant to kill so yep. pesticides kill what we call pests which is such a terrible name yeah. for nature bees bugs butterflies like they're really important to our ecosystem all of god's creation is here for a reason um and it makes it breaks my heart to know that we're killing our grass the weeds the bugs the bees um and also killing ourselves yeah by putting those chemicals in our environment on our grass where children run your dog runs through like those are touching you yeah. they're yeah, they're in the air they're in the water they're everywhere <laughs> yeah they, they cause damage at a cellular level and your dna can be affected by these uh by these pesticides. Mm -hmm. So there's a large class of forever chemicals. Um, there are also many other common forms of things that we experience in our environment that cause oxidative stress. So uh, both smoking and alcohol consumption cause oxidative stress in your body. Processed foods, so pretty much anything that you would buy in a plastic wrapper or in a box at the store um, foods fried in seed oils or vegetable oils is another, uh, another term, canola oil, um, which is everywhere. Microplastics, uh, which can be found in, in water, specifically plastic water bottles is a huge contributor to microplastics in the bloodstream. And then lastly, which we talked about a lot earlier is high blood sugar levels, um, mm. causing those cause endothelial damage as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, we mentioned it's not cholesterol alone, although cholesterol is present at the site, you know, and, and that's what those studies assumed is the cause. Really, the question, the question we should be asking is why are we seeing endothelial damage and why is cholesterol forming into plaque? And that's oxidative stress. So, um, that's what's causing this, all of these different factors. It's like we talked that. about in the last episode about high blood sugar, right? Like yeah. my body was in a constant state of stress. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your body doesn't really know what to do. It's kind of on edge. It's kind of jittery. 
uh, you're in this fight or flight mode when you're processing heavy levels of sugar. The same is true of any toxin. It's just, it's hard to know how it's affecting your body when you do have a baseline established. We can think of this as when we're, um, when we establish a tolerance to something like caffeine or alcohol, um, we often talk about tolerances. The same is true of any toxin in our body, as well as how our body reacts to high levels of carbohydrates and processed foods. And thank God that our body is that strong and perfectly designed and resilient to be able to deal with all of this stuff. Yeah. But it can only take so much. That's right. And that's when disease happens. Yep. Our body is like, hello, like, help me please. Like, this is quite a bit of sugar. This is a lot of synthetic food. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, our body's doing our best. And that I'm so thankful that our bodies are that strong and can, you know, have so many different functions and can do so many different things. Yep. But at some point, like, you know, if you're not caring for your body, if you're not giving it a break, if you're not truly nourishing it, that's when disease comes up. Yeah. And we may not even see any symptoms when our body's in this mode. Um, if our body's in fight or flight, it doesn't have the space to react to what's going on. It's just trying to process. It's just trying to keep up with this mm -hmm. toxic load, which like I said, many forms can be environmental or dietary, can even be stressors emotional. from emotional stressors. Yeah. Family, um, you know, issues with friends, those kind of things. Um, any, any kind of conflict uh, or stressor can lead to this oxidative stress. And if our body's in this fight or flight mode, we may not see any symptoms because it, it doesn't have the space to try to heal or rest to recover. It's, it's just in survival mode. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we finally reduce those, we might start to see some symptoms for a while. Um, some people do see symptoms because they've been dealing with it for so long. Yeah. And even when they address these different areas of their life, diet, movement, sunlight, community, spirituality, when a lot of people start to address these different areas, they may still have symptoms for a while because their body is still it's trying recovering. to recover and trying yeah. to fix um, damage. Now, our bodies are incredible at trying to clean up, mm -hmm. but, the problem comes when we try to introduce external things to mask symptoms. Like really, statins. really, we're preventing the body from doing what it needs to do to fix the underlying issue. That's a little bit about toxins and oxidative stress. We really don't believe that cholesterol is the core issue here, just because it's present at the scene. Really, the underlying issue is why our arteries and blood vessels have oxidative stress. And essentially, when you, when you think about that, it's like a crack. It's like a crack in a pipe. And we're asking, hey, why are things getting stuck to the side? Mm. Really, it's your body is trying to fix that crack, mm -hmm. right? It's trying to fix the crack in the pipeline so that you're not leaking. It's not the plaque alone. That's, it's not the cholesterol. It's not the cholesterol forming plaque that's really the underlying issue. It's just mm -hmm. your body is trying to combat something that is causing it significant stress. So yeah. when, when you were talking just now, I thought of the Sopranos. I haven't even seen the whole thing, but I watched pieces of it with my dad growing up. Mm -hmm. And all I know, I don't even know what goes on in the show. I just know it's really stressful. Mm -hmm. And the main character, the dad in the Sopranos, I don't even know his name, but he is just like, when I think of someone that's really stressed out, I think of him and I'm pretty sure at some point in the series, he starts having heart attacks and strokes yeah, and, yeah, so. and this happens in real life as well. Like people that live really high stress lives get heart disease, it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with their diet. Mm -hmm. They could be vegan or like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I guess some people could argue maybe it does have to do with their diet, but I think it can contribute your, your yeah. diet can contribute to that. But yeah. I guess what we're trying to point out yeah. here is sugar is the cause of so many different mm -hmm. diseases, processed foods, um, high, lina sure. yeah, high linoleic acid foods, which are seed oils, mm -hmm. um, yeah. can lead to this oxidative stress. Yeah. And really, re it's reducing the stress. Your, your body's mm -hmm. not stressed when it's processing a steak and butter <laughs> and yeah. sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's stressed when it's processing a 12 pack of Oreos. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that's what I, I want us to, to try to, uh, re, to try to talk about and really just shift the focus, um, in a, in to what the real cause is, what the root of the issue is, which are, we're consuming processed foods at significantly higher rates than we have been since the seventies. Mm-hmm. We're consuming sugar at significantly higher rates as well. And added sugar is making its way into almost every food product. One of the biggest lies we've been sold is that fat makes you fat and fat is a necessary part of our diet. It's really one of the core contributors to satiety, how full you feel after eating a meal. Fats add that flavor. It really gives you the feeling of satisfaction when you consume fat with your food, um, like in every meal. That's one of the largest lies we've been sold. And when, when we cut out fats, which aren't bad for our body, they're our core in a healthy, a healthy diet, um, the food often lacks the flavor and satisfaction that we expect from a food. And so what many companies have done is they've started adding sugar in there, which makes the food taste better and makes it more addicting. When uh, our brain is processing sugar, it is very similar. Um, what were the studies around cocaine and its effects versus sugar and its effects? Um, I, I think there, there are studies showing that that sugar is more addicting to the brain than cocaine is. It's there's tons of I mean, if you believe in academia and science, then I mean, there's clear proof, yeah, clear studies that show that sugar, processed sugar specifically, is insanely addictive, yeah, drug like. It's it's bad. So that's how these companies keep us coming back for more of their food. Um, how they gain you know name brand recognition and why we keep going for things and things that we think are healthy like. Uh, like a yolk play yogurt. Mm. If you go look at how much added sugar <laughs> in there is in there, it's mind blowing. It's so yummy. It, yeah, I get it. Like I, we've both been sugar addicts in the past. Mm-hmm. You know, we grew up eating these foods, so of course we were addicted to them. I woke up in the morning wanting a toaster strudel and nothing else for breakfast. Why would I eat some eggs if the toaster strudel is healthier for me and it tastes amazing? Like you get a, you get a high from it as soon as you take a bite. It's like Nathan and I would even joke about this at the beginning of our relationship when we ate. I don't know, we'd go to like Gordo's, which is a local, it's, so bad for you. it's an Austin restaurant that serves donuts yeah. as a meal. Yeah. Uh, a sandwich on a donut. Yeah. And we would go there and we'd be like, oh my gosh, this is what crack must feel like. Like we, we take one bite of this food and we'd be like, like mm-hmm. orgasming. It was, it was so silly, but it, I mean, it was so good. Yeah. I understand, you know, I take a bite of so much sugar, processed carbohydrates, fried in seed oils, dopamine, like crazy. Yeah. You're just like, whoa, this mm-hmm. is amazing. You know, it, that just shows how addictive it is. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, kind of like we pointed out in the pharmaceutical industry, these food companies obviously have financial incentive to get you to continually buy their food. Um, and that's why they've leaned really into sugar being an added ingredient. Um, it gets you coming back for more. And um, this is also really dark. And I hope that I'm not right. But I really do believe this. It gets you coming back for more and it keeps us sick. Yeah. yeah. I really the, believe that hospitals are a business. The, if we're not sick, they're not making money. Yeah. They're taught to sell. That's what they're taught in medical school is here's this drug that you prescribe for this thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they make lots of money from one vaccination, one prescription. Mm-hmm. And if we're, if we're healthy, they, you know, we don't need to take those things and they're not making money off of us. It's really, really sad. But... Yeah. There are two industries that feed off of each other, the pharmaceutical industry and the food industry in America. Um, we have foods that are allowed here that are banned almost everywhere else in the world. Skittles, and, Doritos and are also banned. The Skittles you buy in England are different from the Skittles you get here because those ingredients are banned there. And so yeah. if, if we actually, if our, you know, if we actually had a government that cared about our well-being, they would also ban these known carcinogens, known they would ban neurotoxins, yeah. and force these food companies to provide a better product. But mm-hmm. right now there's no incentive. The only incentive is how much money that they can make off of us. And it's a mutually beneficial 
industry with pharmaceuticals. So um, we, I know this sounds daunting. Um, We, we do want to say there are alternatives and you can break this cycle. Um, It is challenging, but we know you can do it because we did it. It's only challenging because our world tells us that these things are okay. And like, Oh, it's just one donut. It's fine. Right. That's the only reason it's challenging. Once you, silence the noise of what our culture is telling you Mm -hmm. and you get firm on what you believe is good and true yeah it becomes easier i think one of the huge things here is that we don't need constant satisfaction no we need to be that's bad for you we need to be (laughs) better about managing our dopamine levels and being disciplined and saying no to ourselves on certain things and um I, I think it leads to better enjoyment in many areas of our lives. Mm-hmm. It's better for you from a psychological perspective, yeah. having the ability to be disciplined. And not being addicted, having an addictive and not, personality. And it, not being addicted to certain things. So yeah. um, I think food is like a, a great stepping stone for that. It's incredibly empowering mm-hmm. to be able to say, I, I want to focus on foods that nourish my body and help my body heal and function at its prime. Mm -hmm. And you will see so many benefits in other areas of your life. Mm -hmm. You think more clearly, you're able to show up better at work. You're able to have energy throughout your entire day. Like Mm -hmm. until the moment, sometimes I'm still wide awake when we're (laughs) about to go to sleep. Even though I'm I'm doing all the things to wind down, it's just, I still have energy because the food is actually helping my body run at peak. And your brain. And my brain run at peak performance. Um, And it's incredible. I like, I feel like I can show up better in my relationships. I can show up better at work. I can show up better every every in every place i'm in um, and we still enjoy delicious treats and food like we're not starving ourselves yeah. from the enjoyment that we used to have from fast food we have learned how to make i make homemade everything. cookies i yeah. make cake i make yeah. pie yes in moderation because sugar is still sugar but like we still enjoy s- s- treats from local farmers yeah. and local shops that make cookies and like we're not starving ourselves from dopamine we're just limiting it and getting it from other things that matter more like our relationship with god our our marriage our relationship with our friends those that satisfaction fills me up yeah fully i view it like it's like saturday morning cartoons you know Mm -hmm. like (laughs) you're looking forward to it throughout the week and you really it's it's a moment you really enjoy when it's a special occasion it's no longer every meal yeah yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we, we as Americans have gotten into this space where we feel like we work really hard and so we deserve many things. Mm. And that I think is really hard on us from a, um, a psychological perspective. We're mm. feeding into the, the constant dopamine and it, it leads to less satisfaction in tons of areas of our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, also and leaning we, into this idea of like work hard, play hard, right? Like yeah, I worked yeah. really hard for this, so I deserve this. It's very selfish. Yeah. I, 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 right? Yeah. It's this yeah. is what I deserve. I deserve this donut at the end of the day. Like, yeah. Well, what we, does your body we, deserve? We, we struggle with that for a really long time. We, yeah. It's still something that we have to be uh, vigilant about fighting. Very mindful. Uh, be really, yeah, very mindful about when we give in and when we don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, and we don't beat ourselves up when we give in. We're yeah. human. We're going to make mistakes. We'll never be perfect. We will yeah. be sinners for the rest of our lives. Yeah. So just give yourself some grace, but also lean into the importance of self-discipline. Yeah. And and doing things for other people. Mm-hmm. Do, doing things for God. Doing like, things for your future children or yes. your your kids you already have, you know, but for yeah. their future, so that you're able to show up for them mm. even in your old age i think there's so much there yeah there's there is so much there um and you know this whole that longevity I, perspective you know mm-hmm. we talk a lot about longevity that's what that's why people um really like the blue zone document you know that's what blues the blue zone documentaries are about that's that's our why and i think most people can resonate with that why of nathan and i want to live 
long. We want to be healthy well into our 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I always tell people I'm going to live to 120 yeah. because I believe that we all set our own expiration dates. And yeah, it's true. I, I, Nathan wants to be healthy in his 50s, 60s so that he can surf and longboard with his grandchildren yeah. and so that we can be there for, you know, people. There's a saying that I see everywhere on social media that I would die mm. for my kids. And now people are, you know, kind of flipping it the other way and saying, but would you live for your kids? We're seeing this with our parents and it breaks our hearts. You know, they're dealing with disease and they're mm. suffering and they're in pain and it sucks. We want to be able to be mobile and walk and go on hikes and go on adventures with our children and their children and, and live and truly enjoy our lives. It's, it's not necessarily about living longer, but just feeling good while we're here and our hearts are going to be broken the day that our loved ones pass away. Yeah. And if I can prolong, not prolong, but prevent that heartbreak for a little bit longer for my family. Yeah, live a full life. And yeah. give, give your children and grandchildren a full experience of... Yeah. Of, and, and I want to be a good example yeah. of this is what you do to live a full life. And, you know, my mom's in her 60s and 70s and she's active and feeling great and isn't in pain. You know, I, I don't want my children, I don't want my grandchildren to see me suffering. Yeah. Um, and maybe that has to happen at a certain point and that's okay. That's just part of life. And look, I don't know what my future is going to look like. Only God does, but this is my why behind what I'm doing today. I focus on my fertility and my diet and why I don't drink alcohol, why mm. I treat my body like a temple. It's not for my body's not for me. It's for God someday. And it's for my future children. It's, it's hard to flip that mindset from like, my body is mine. I'm going to do this for me. And so that I look cute or whatever. And so I'm skinny. And so I'm, it's no longer about that for me. It's about how can I treat my body well in, um, in a selfless way for mm -hmm. other people? How can I, how can my body be a vessel and a gift for others? Speaking of treating your body like the beautiful temple that it is, let's talk about meat quality and supporting farms that practice regeneration, farms that care for the earth, farmers, ranchers that care about healing disease and treating these animals like the gift that they are. Mm. Yeah, that's great. A, a lot of people think that eating animals is somehow worse for the environment. And that may be true with industrial agriculture and industrial ranching. Mm -hmm. Both of those aren't great for the environment. So mm -hmm. it's kind of pointing a finger at really the wrong issue because that issue exists with both industrial agriculture and ranching. So it's not just the animals, but it's also the monocrop farms that are, they're only producing one thing. Like even if it's organic kale, it still may be damaging the soil and causing climate change on a micro scale. Why is it damaging the soil? Well, even if it's organic, many times they still use pesticides, but mm -hmm. the vast majority of farms are doing something called till tilling, mm -hmm. um, which is basically compacting the soil, breaking up just the top level of soil in order to plant seeds. And that releases a ton of carbon into the atmosphere. Uh, but it also compacts the soil underneath and makes it to where there's basically no biodiversity, no living organisms in the soil. And so when we think about organic soil, you know, really great top soil, that's good, a good growing environment. Mm -hmm. You expect to see a ton of biodiversity in there, tons of microorganisms. And um, a lot of these monocrop farms don't follow these practices. Same thing with um, industrial agriculture. And so I think the key problem here is we've kind of separated industrial agriculture and industrial ranching. They become two separate things where we have fields of a monocrop and then we have feedlots that are basically barren. There's no nothing growing in mm -hmm. a feedlot. It's just dirt. And we're, we're ending up in a place where we've moved from beautiful lush green pastures to fields of dirt with hardly anything living in mm -hmm. them at all. Yeah. So really that 
I, I see that argument. I see the argument for climate change, but it's point, It's really is pointing a finger at the wrong thing and not acknowledging that plants can also be the issue if they're not grown in the right way. And so mm-hmm. we really want to focus on regenerative agriculture mm-hmm. and animals that graze on mm-hmm. grass, grass-fed animals. Um, yeah. Uh, we watched a mini documentary that I think is 25 minutes on Disney+. Plus called little big biggest little farm biggest little farm yeah and it it shows what regenerative farming is and how important biodiversity is so biodiversity means having a diverse amount of living organisms bacteria Mm -hmm. we're made up of bacteria in one place so we have a skin microbiome we have a gut microbiome we live you have an oral microbiome yeah a vaginal microbiome like there we're we're just made up of a whole bunch of bacteria Mm -hmm. and environments there are more bacteria than there are human cells (laughs) yeah which is pretty wild on the tip of your finger it's crazy um and the goal for a regenerative farm is to bring in a whole bunch of different living organisms to balance each other out and and plant a very diverse um spe- like many species yeah. cover crop yeah and so when you look at those lands it's like pretty tall grassland mm-hmm. and what they do is they cycle the animals between different subplots mm-hmm. um so different sections of the property they set up temporary fences mm-hmm. and move the animals in between them and so there's a- always a grass crazing animal a ruminant animal like bison mm-hmm. or lamb and i love that they don't use they don't intervene at all with nature so if there's like an infestation of snails they'll bring in ducks to eat the snails like everything works perfectly as god designed it and there's no man-made intervention no one's coming in with hazmat suits spraying weed killer everywhere these animals are just living in harmony together um and as they were meant to be which means that the animals are nutrient dense the soil is really nutrient dense the food is then nutrient dense those yeah. animals and those plants then turn into the highest quality food that you can buy so regenerative farms don't even they don't usually label themselves as organic that is like the most organic food that you can get but mm. some of them don't go through with the certification um because it's expensive and it's a long process but yeah. you can assume that if it's from a regenerative farm they are letting the land regenerate they're letting it do its thing the animals are living their life as they should there's no intervention which is the ultimate organic food yeah yeah it's definitely a step above organic um, like we talked about with <clears throat> with monocrop you know a lot of them still using pesticides and they're still causing damage to the the soil climate so um definitely best to focus on buying regenerative whenever possible mm-hmm. um, yeah we stay away from buying conventional meat as much as possible (laughs) it's just not really doing much for you uh and it could be harming you as well you don't know what the animal what the environment was like what they were being fed if they were being injected with something Mm -hmm. um the goal in conventional farming is to um you know produce as much as possible and save as much money as possible wow that s was sharp i got really close um so yeah don't buy conventional meat and don't fall for the word natural i see that all the time on chicken packages at heb it says like natural chicken um why wouldn't the chicken be natural so that's sketchy just don't fall for it (laughs) yeah it's a marketing technique they're trying to make you think it's organic or make you think that it's higher quality Mm -hmm. than it actually is yeah even if the animal is antibiotic free i like i just said i like to ask the question what environment was this animal in you know we don't know if a chicken was in a really small cage its entire life and usually animals are born indoors and they never even get to see sunlight they never get to see fresh feel fresh air because the goal is to grow them, fatten them up, and then slaughter mm-hmm. them, which is 
is awful. Yeah, antibiotic free is another it's another marketing technique because by regulation in the United States, all chickens have to be antibiotic free. Yeah, it's against the law. Yeah. Now, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I don't want to eat animals. I don't want to eat anything that lived a very stressed out life. Um you know, was born in a small cage where it can't even turn around, rotate. And uh, I don't want to support people that are doing that, that don't care for these animals' well-being. Mm -hmm. So if you love the environment, if you love animals, then support regenerative because they actually care for the animals. Don't mm -hmm. support these conventional factories that do not care about these lives at all. Yeah, one of the, the biggest um, one of the biggest arguments, you know, about climate change is that cows alone, it's like the amount of methane and CO two that's produced by cows is really what's damaging the earth. And I think that's a half truth. It really is focused more around those feedlots and mm -hmm. industrial, even agri industrial agriculture. We're we're destroying the soil, which the soil can hold way more carbon mm -hmm. um, than than anything else. And yeah, it's just, it's wild that when we do these practices like tilling, we're releasing tons and tons of uh, carbon back into the atmosphere. What was the other documentary we just watched, Kiss the Ground? Yeah, Kiss the Ground. It's so good. Mm. Um, I'm going to link Kiss the Ground and the 25-minute documentary on Disney Plus in the show notes so that you guys can go watch it. It just, this, this is the solution. Mm. Like, if our government is truly afraid of climate change, if the media really cares about saving the earth, yeah. Then we need to pe be promoting regenerative agriculture. Yeah, like everyone, absolutely. everyone needs to know if you care about your life here on earth <laughs> and the food that you eat, and if you care about having food for you to eat in the future and your children, you need to watch these documentaries and educate yourself on, on regenerative agriculture because I think we are going in this way, thankfully, but if we don't, and if we just continue to do things the way that we've been doing it, we will not have food Yeah, in like 60 years. Yeah. This, the, we're losing all the topsoil. I, I think that's the, one of the biggest kickers about climate change is we're not going to be able to feed the world. People aren't going to be mm -hmm. able to eat. It won't, won't, you won't have animals. You won't have plants. You yeah. won't be able to eat at all mm -hmm. unless we start regenerating the soil. Um, we're just absolutely destroying it through this, these industrial techniques and, mm -hmm. um, we're really focused on the, on trying to combat the wrong, the wrong problems. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that one's a pretty, pretty wild one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, we highly encourage you to go watch kiss the ground, um, mm -hmm. and get a better understanding of what regenerative agriculture is. And it's, it's a beautiful picture of hope. Yeah. Like if you, mm -hmm you know, care about future generations. And if you love God's creation and the earth, then it should bring you a lot of peace and hope and get you excited and motivated to support regenerative agriculture, start growing your own food and stop supporting conventional farming. Yeah. Yeah. So moral here, buy regenerative if you can. Mm -hmm. um, this is easy. It's easier to find at a farmer's market than in a grocery store but luckily there are options in the grocery store too yeah um one of those popping up is force of nature mm -hmm. so you, you should be able to find force of nature in whole foods um, h-e-b H -E -B, and sometimes that's if you're, if you're too. local to texas central texas um if you're not i will link other regenerative farms that you can order from online yeah i'll put those in the show notes as well yeah you can also order from force of nature's website mm -hmm. um so that's a, that's a great option. Get yeah. it straight to your door. I want to touch on uh, just another reason why I love regenerative agriculture. I already mentioned that it is truly organic because they're not adding anything to it, but the quality of the meat is as fresh as it can be yeah. because the animals are living as they were created too. So they're roaming, they're eating bugs or grass, and they're very happy in mm -hmm. their flock or in their herd. So um, they're just no one's like interfering mm -hmm. they're letting them be and then another piece that i really love that i know rome ranch does is that they 
end the animal's life in a ceremonial way. So they end the animal's life in a very humane way. Mm -hmm. There's no suffering. Um, and there's prayer and a lot of respect. A lot, everyone comes around the one animal and pray and thank it for the life that was given up for us to eat it, which is yeah. just so unique. I'd never heard of that. We we learned about this because we toured Rome Ranch. Mm -hmm. um, in live, Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm, we live about an hour away. And if you live in Central Texas or you're on a road trip and want to go check it out, I highly recommend it. They teach you everything about regenerative agriculture. You get to see the bison. You get to see the turkeys. Um, it's a beautiful place. And yeah, yeah. It, it's just, it's amazing. They're doing great work. Yeah, they also let the herd uh, mourn. They let mm, let them mourn the yeah. loss too, which <laughs> I think that's the ultimate level of respect. You're mm -hmm. um, allowing them to grieve and yeah. process, and um, yeah, it's, it's so sad. It's they they said that, that, they the, for that they'll usually take the one bison out of the herd that isn't doing very well. Mm -hmm. So they'll purposely pick yeah. one animal to leave the herd and then they'll they shoot it mm -hmm. in one particular area to make sure there's no suffering and then they let the animals um gather around mm -hmm. the one animal that just passed yeah. to, to let them soak it in and grieve and then they pray over it and then it becomes the most nutrient-dense food for us to eat which is yeah. just yeah, such a gift. Yeah, Force of Nature uh, is synonymous with Rome Ranch. Rome Ranch is the ranch in Fredericksburg, mm. um, and they sell their meat through their parent brand, which is Force of Nature Meats. So that's what you can find in the grocery store. They work with a handful of other regenerative farms in order to um, in order to offer a variety of different animals from different regenerative ranches um, around Texas. So that's one one option. Um, the other option is doing like a cow share, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty cool as well. Split it with a friend or your family members or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a half cow can feed a family of four for an entire year. Um, so that that's a great option. You can store it in in like a chest freezer, um, and yeah. Yeah, it it makes it significantly cheaper than, you know, having to go to the grocery store and buy meat every time. So mm -hmm. it brings your price per pound down significantly. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is one more thing about regenerative agriculture that I, I just want to, like, really emphasize that buying from buying conventional meat, which I think most of us do. We did mm -hmm. before we, we didn't know what regenerative agriculture was. Yeah. I don't even know how we found out about it. Probably from just people that we follow in the health space, probably Paul Salad, you know? Mm. Um, but before that we didn't, we just bought whatever chicken, whatever beef, whatever fish from the store. We didn't read labels. Maybe we'd buy organic because I don't know, this seems healthier <laughs> than non-organic, but, um, yeah, regenerative practices that, you know, they don't interfere with the animal's natural way of living, mm -hmm. which the animal then thrives. Um, and it, it's kind of like a human that's inside all day, mm -hmm. given the cheapest food possible and is isolated. I, f I feel like I can bet that they're more likely to be sick mm -hmm. versus a human that is outdoors, um, living their life in nature, has community you know, these herds, these flocks, and they're enjoying creation, they're roaming, you can bet that that, that guy that's living as intended is healthier. Mm -hmm. So the same goes for animals. And I think we also forget that we are animals. Yeah, um, We're not meant to be like in cubicles all day, just like these chickens and these cows. And Eating this way helps improve a ton of different biomarkers. Like, um, Everything from hormone regulation to mineral imbalances being addressed, mm -hmm. um, you're getting, that's the point really behind this nutrient dense food mm -hmm. is giving your body everything it needs to flourish. <clears throat> yeah. And when you eat this way, it really helps in a ton of different facets of, of, our, of your life. And mm -hmm. um, it's made huge, it's been incredibly impactful to, to our lives and Mm -hmm. uh, just the way we feel. So 
and reflects in our blood work. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if you can for chicken eggs, um, buy pasture raised specifically for chicken and eggs, make sure that they are soy and soy. <laughs> Make sure that they are soy and corn free. Yeah. And then for venison and elk, also look for pasteurized. For beef and bison, we buy grass fed, grass finished. Mm -hmm. And then for fish, make sure that you buy, buy, oh my gosh, I can't speak. Make sure that you buy wild caught yep. farm raised fish is so nasty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just because it says Atlantic or, you know, Atlantic salmon can still be farm raised yeah. and they're in really bad conditions. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, ideally wild caught whenever possible. Yeah. Pasteurized soy and corn free. It is kind of hard to find soy and corn free unless you have a farmer's market. Yeah. Um, but ask, yeah. It, ask what they feed their animals. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you live in Austin, uh, there's, there's also an option, local pastures, mm -hmm. um, down on old Tor street, really great spot, amazing meat, amazing eggs, all from, all from farms in the area. So, mm -hmm. and um, they're regenerative farms. Yep. All the chicken eggs are pastured beef and bison are grass fed. Um, yeah. For wild caught fish, we haven't found a good, we live in Texas, so yeah. we don't have high quality seafood around here, but, um, you we, can order online. Yeah. You can order online. You can get wild caught at whole foods and I'm sure other grocery stores too. Mm -hmm. And then also the Patagonia brand has, um, canned, already cooked seafood, like mm. mussels, mm. oysters, uh, trout, salmon, that kind of thing in a can. So mm -hmm. that's an, another great option. Yep. So uh, what if you can't afford regenerative meat or organic fruits and veggies? Yeah, that's the argument that I hear the most when we share this with people. They're like, well, we don't have the money for that, or it's so expensive. And I think all food's expensive today, Yeah, especially here in Austin. The mm -hmm. food is just insane. Um, eating out is really expensive. You'll spend at least $50 for two people. In Austin, yeah. And, yep. Yeah, and it's not high-quality food. And all that, yeah. It's not high-quality food at all. Um, it's not pastured chicken. It's not grass-fed beef. It's not mm. wild-caught food. There are some restaurants in Austin that... There are a few. They are more expensive. But those are more expensive. Yeah. yeah. You'll spend minimum $70 on two people. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, there's really... You know, there is a convenience factor here. And I think a lot of people lean into it's more convenient to eat out. Yeah. And I feel like once people actually do the math, they're like, okay, it's not that bad. Yeah. I think it, in a lot of cases, it's about 10 to 20% more expensive, which isn't crazy, especially when you factor in the fact that hopefully this deters you a little bit from eating out. It, it helps you cook at home, make more nutrient dense meals. And really the keys in the name nutrient dense is it's going to be more filling, more satiating, better for your body. You're going to be functioning a mm -hmm. higher capacity. Um, so that 10 to 20% r really is negligible when you, mm -hmm. when you experience it when you're experiencing that food and seeing just how much it's doing for your body. Mm. So, um, in every scenario, <laughs> I've done the math on this a lot and, um, every scenario you can eat regenerative and organic food cheaper than you can eat out fast food. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. if you're willing to do the work to cook at home and sacrifice that convenience, you're going to save money and eat, eat significantly better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and something that a lot of our friends say is you either pay for it now or you pay for it later. Yeah. And that's a really harsh truth. Yeah. Um, but it is very true. Like, you know, we see it with our family members there. My dad spends a lot of money on doctor's visits, so does my mom, and a lot of medication, and that stuff is not cheap. It's really, really expensive. Yeah. Insurance is expensive. Um any kind of health care is really expensive. Yeah. So I see this spending, you know, investing in our food as my form of health care. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm putting, I'm investing in my, in my nutrition and my body and yeah. saving lots of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, like I said, I, it helps you perform better at work. It helps you perform better in the gym. You're going to, you're going to reach fitness goals faster um, 
think clearer, have less headaches, have less other side effects. And it's an incredible experience once you, once you um, dive into it. The food that we put into our body should be yeah. our biggest investment for sure. Yeah, you're, you're also supporting people who are trying to do the right thing, who are focused on the earth, mm. focused on treating animals correctly. Um, and many times these are your neighbors. These are locals just trying to run a, their own local business Yeah, um, who also, they just really care about doing the right thing. And um, we're voting with our dollars. We're putting it in the right place rather than these, you know, mega corporations that run all of the fast food um, and even the vast majority of restaurant groups. So um, it's a great way to spend your money on something that has a positive impact um, for yourself, but also your community and, and the rest of the world. Cool. I think we need to close it out. I, I think a lot of people have asked, you know, what kind of food should we focus on? The best thing you can focus on is regenerative red meat from ruminant animals. So bison, um, grass-fed, grass-finished beef, venison, um, also wild-caught seafood, soy-free, corn-free eggs, organic fruits and vegetables, um, ideally a lot of root vegetables. Sweet potatoes are really great. Mm -hmm. um, squash, zucchini, those are really great, as well as berries. I think berries are incredibly nutrient-dense and, mm -hmm. and full of antioxidants, so blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. Kiwis are great as kiwis, well. Kiwis, yeah. Um, so that's what we try to try to focus on. Uh, also, raw dairy, you eat raw cheese, grass-fed butter. Mm -hmm. Um, haven't tried the raw milk yet, but will someday soon. That's what we try to focus the vast majority of our diet on. I think that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. We both really hope that you enjoyed it. Let us know if you have any questions and see you guys next time for episode five, where we'll continue this conversation. Um, and we'll go a little bit deeper into saturated fats and seed oils. Hope you all have a good week. Bye.